In New York, everything is big. The Empire State Building, the World Trade Center, the traffic, the prices, even the computer trade shows. I guess that's why they call it the Big Apple. But it's more like the big PC here on the west side of town by the Javits Convention Center as more than 100,000 visitors are cruising the aisles looking for the newest and neatest hardware and software products. Today, we'll take you inside PC Expo on this special edition of the Computer Chronicles. to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe here at PC Expo in New York along with Tim Baharin, President of Creative Strategies. Tim, this is the biggest PC Expo ever with more than 100,000 people here. But I guess the big story here in New York is Chicago. Right. Chicago is what everybody wants to come and see. They want to know what the next generation of Windows is going to look like. And it's interesting because Microsoft's not really showing them the whole kimono per se. What they're actually showing is little tidbits such as the uh, taskbar and how you go to start new applications for the multitasking. And, you know, a few little tidbits. Get everybody's appetite wet. The other thing that this show is real interesting is that you're seeing small portables are being hot. So, for example, when you go over to the Sony booth, you'll see a brand new CD-ROM drive, two and a half inch format, both portable and can be actually in interjected into a PC. But in that little two and a half inch drive, which is read-write, you can actually put 140 megabytes of information. Another uh, booth here that's really been crowded has been the Epson booth. They have a new printer, a desk jet type printer, inkjet, that has color inkjet but it uses a new technology that they have that lets you have what looks like photorealistic images. Really a beautiful uh, color printer. 550 bucks. Amazing. And the other thing that's uh, really high is this portable computing side. And the one that people are looking at a lot is this notebook or sub-notebook, the Portage, which is a TFT-based color notebook that's really hot from Toshiba. So it's a really interesting show in that context. All right, today we'll take you on a tour of the Big Apple's big computer show. The cab fare is free, so come along for a ride down the information highway, and we'll take it one aisle at a time. Trade shows include a little bit of everything these days to grab your attention. Here at PC Expo, there was the Intel World Chess Grand Prix, featuring chess champion Gary Kasparov. This is just madness happening on the chessboard. We'll try to make some sense of it for you. Symantec hosted the first information superhighway wedding, conducted over ISDN lines. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. And hundreds of people waited in line to experience virtual reality through cyber cycling and hang gliding. On the more serious side, the big players were pushing mainstream computer products. And the major push here was from IBM, Motorola, and Apple, who were trying to convince the attendees that the Power PC is the future of personal computing. IBM was talking about a Power PC computer, but the first real Power PC machine came from a Taiwanese company called Datatech. The DTK Power PC 166 and PC 80 were being demonstrated at the Motorola booth. The big question on Power PC is will there be software support? Motorola says yes. The software industry is, is pretty much dominated by five or six major players. They represent 70% of the volume. The, the Microsofts, the Borlands, the Intuits, the WordPerfects, the Lotus people. Th their top 175 packages also represent about 70% of the volume. They're doing native ports to PowerPC on those top 175 contemporary packages. So. 70% of the market is going to be covered with native apps. The other packages will be done with emulation, and over time, as the volume supports it, they'll be ported native also. Apple was also at PC Expo telling the Power Mac side of the Power PC story. Apple's strategy is to utilize the speed of the Power PC chip to provide users with a choice of operating environments. What we do provide is the ability and what we're demonstrating to essentially have a single display that gives the users the ability to easily essentially toggle between the environments, have both environments currently active, 
what I'm actually demonstrating here is two displays hooked up, so you can look at the Macintosh environment with System 7 on one display and DOS and Windows on the other. But despite all the hoopla for the Power PC and the Power Mac, Tim Baharin says a realistic view of the PC world is that not much is going to change. Intel, with their Pentium and their P6, which is their next generation product, I mean, these are basically going to be mainstream products. And whether Apple can actually go beyond their 15% market share is a little bit questionable at this point. I mean, if they're really lucky, they might get to this 20%. But well, the bottom line is Intel still owns this market, and they will for a long time. Next up, a look at new software unveiled at PC Expo. A computer trade show is always a likely venue for introducing new software products, and PC Expo was no exception. The new WordPerfect Novell company introduced their new business suite, Perfect Office. Microsoft was showing sneak previews of Windows 4.0, and Borland finally released DBase for Windows. Borland chairman Philippe Kahn showed up at PC Expo to do the honors himself. Kahn says DBase for Windows is completely compatible with the earlier DOS product, and includes new features like the Navigator, which gives you easy access to tables, queries, forms, and applications. The form designer is also new in DBase 5 for Windows. You can look at live data while you're designing the form, so you can see exactly what the final results will look like. DBase for Windows uses object-oriented technology, meaning you can use built-in objects or create new ones that can be reused. One of the major software themes at this trade show was the continuing battle between IBM's OS2 and Microsoft's Windows. IBM was bragging about the fact that its newest version of OS2 was already on the market, while Microsoft was still beta testing its latest Windows upgrade. IBM had some fun with Microsoft and its delays on Chicago, the pre-release name for Windows 4. But the crowds at PC Expo didn't seem to care that much about delays. There were mobs at the Microsoft booth for sneak previews of Chicago. How different is Windows 4 from the current 3.1 version? InfoWorld editor Stuart Alsop says it is a significant upgrade. The real key about Chicago is that it's really a new operating system. Um, all the complaints that people have about Windows uh, in terms of the, its ability, its a, a tendency to fail at crucial moments and uh, to, ha to have to edit your configuration files and all of the difficult stuff about Windows are really what Microsoft changes. So with a new operating system, it's self-configuring and it's self-managing and it's got a better user interface. And so it should fundamentally be an easier system to use um, and more fun. You know? Alsep wasn't alone in his praise for the new version of Windows. Industry analyst Tim Baharin agrees that Chicago is a lot better interface because it sits on a much better operating system. This is a brand new operating system with an entire different set of code that does not rely on DOS whatsoever. So from a, a new user standpoint, it's very intuitive, easy to look at, point and click, and you can pretty much get into it within about five minutes. From a, a power user standpoint, it gives you some of the things that the Macintosh had, lets you be able to drag and drop files. For example, in DOS, you could only do eight or nine characters for a file. Now you can do up to 255 characters. If you're still a DOS user, IBM also demonstrated its new PC DOS 6.3. Though IBM has reached an agreement with Stack Electronics to use Stacker technology in all future versions of PC DOS, 6.3 still uses the less efficient Superstore data compression. Not to be left out of the operating system wars, Apple was promoting its new System 7.5 for the Macintosh. But Tim Baharin says major improvements in the Mac interface are still one upgrade away. The truth of the matter is we probably won't see a lot of new innovation from Apple on the interface design until we get to uh, 8.0, which in that point would be a brand new operating system that would add a lot of new features that are, that are easier to use. And at this point, I'm probably not going to see that till sometime mid-1995. Apple also used PC Expo to launch the new upgrade to QuickTime version 2.0. QuickTime 2 is available for Windows as well as for the Mac. The new QuickTime allows you to open a larger video window than before, and it adds MIDI support. It also gives you the option of doing full motion video and software only, or it will also support MPEG and JPEG video compression boards.
MPEG really allows us to do full, full screen, 30 frames per second, 640 by 480, at a higher quality than what's possible in, uh, in software only. We also support, for people who are doing professional applications on the Macintosh version, we support motion JPEG. And in that, in that context, it's possible to do 60 field per, 60 field per second video. And another major feature we've added on the Macintosh side is time code. So we've really added a number of professional enhancements for people who want to do uh, you know, video authoring playback. Other big software companies exhibiting at PC Expo included WordPerfect. Or was it Novell? It didn't seem to matter to the crowds. They wanted to see the company's new business suite called Perfect Office. The suite includes WordPerfect, Quattro Pro, and Paradox, along with presentations, Info Central, Symmetry, and WordPerfect's newest product, Envoy. Envoy is an electronic publisher that allows you to send a document to a few users or company-wide for viewing and annotation. With Envoy, the recipient does not have to be using the same word processor that you used to create the message. The trouble with buying a notebook computer is the minute you buy one, you find a better one has just come out with more features and at a lower price. That was pretty much the story here at PC Expo. A long list of new notebook computers offering better displays, longer battery life, and improved expandability. Desktop computing will always be cheaper and more powerful than portable computing. But it used to be that portables were a year behind. Now they're only a few months behind. For example, one of the big limitations of portable computing has always been found in CD-ROM. You just couldn't get it. Toshiba is showing at this show for the first time a satellite, which is part of their consumer products, uh, notebook PC, which has an optional uh, Sound Blaster compatible sound system in it. So you've got the multimedia sound. Toshiba's satellite T2400C uses a 50 megahertz 486 DX2 chip and comes with a SCSI 2 port for connecting a CD-ROM drive. It's available with dynamic dual color display or a TFT active matrix display. Toshiba also introduced a new Portage model complete with a 50 megahertz CPU. The T3600CT weighs just four and a quarter pounds and uses a lithium ion battery providing up to six hours of power. In addition to the new notebook computers, Toshiba demonstrated a digital video PCMCIA card. With the Toshiba video card, you can play and record real-time full motion video on your notebook computer. Tim Baharan says that with this type of power in a notebook, half of all PCs sold will soon be portable. Mobile is still one of the hottest topics in any computer show. First of all, uh, most of us as analysts believe that we're going to continue having like 30-35% growth at least for the next two to three years. Secondly, we're packing much more in a smaller form factor. And that small form factor allows us to what we call replicate the desktop. So what we can do on the desktop can now be done in this tiny little package. And we think actually by 1996-97 that 50% of all PCs sold will be portables and they'll start taking over the desktop. This tiny little portable computer is from a Canadian company called Eurocom. It uses a 100 megahertz Pentium chip inside, making it the fastest notebook computer in the world. It comes with an active matrix color screen and sells for around $3,800. If you're into cute portables, this is the Alufa 350 from a Taiwanese company called Chaplet. This computer is so small, the spec sheet lists its dimensions in millimeters. The Alufa Mini Notebook runs on standard alkaline batteries and comes in a color or monochrome version. Price ranges from $1,500 to $2,300. If you own an older model portable computer, a company called Corporate Upgrades says don't replace it, upgrade it. They can upgrade most 286 and 386 portables with a new 486 chip. If you have one of the newer notebook computers, you're probably in the market for PCMCIA peripherals. Coming up next, PCMCIA at PC Expo. It's hard to say, but easy to use. PCMCIA describes these tiny little expansion cards that are migrating from just notebooks to desktops and becoming the new expansion standard for adding peripherals to your PC. If you bought the latest high-speed PC MCIA fax modem for your laptop and wish you could use it on your desktop, a company called Ministore has the answer. The Docket Socket 
replaces an internal three and a half or five and a quarter inch floppy drive slot with a PC MCIA slot, allowing you to use the cards on your desktop. Computer author Larry Maggot says that these little PC MCIA cards will eventually become the expansion standard for all PCs. I see PC MCIA ultimately overtaking the standard cards that we have in our PCs. I mean, they make much better sense. They're smaller. Ultimately, they would be cheaper to produce, and they're ubiquitous. You can put them in a notebook. You can put them in a desktop. You can put them in a handheld device. You can put them in a Mac. You can put them in a PC. They really are the one peripheral that can go almost anywhere. One way to use a PC MCIA slot is for more hard disk storage. Ministore has a 130 megabyte PC MCIA hard drive card, and it comes with stacker compression built in, so you really get 260 megabytes of storage capacity. It is a Type 3 card, so it does take up two PC MCIA slots. Another way to use a PC MCIA slot is to add a SCSI port to your portable computer. This is a Daptex Slim SCSI, a PC MCIA to SCSI host adapter. You can hook up a CD-ROM drive through this port or up to seven daisy chain peripherals. The Adaptex Slim SCSI costs less than $350. A company called NovaLink showed off two PC MCIA modems. The Nova Modem 144 combines data, fax, and voice messaging capabilities for less than $300. The Nova Pack 144 adds paging capability and sells for about $450. Both modems can even replace your answering machine. Uh, please give me a call as soon as you can. I have something very important to talk to you about. Thank you. The Nova Pack can receive numeric messages as a standalone pager, and it can even handle alphanumeric messages when connected to your computer. While PC MCIA is a convenient expansion standard, Stuart Alsop says there are still standards problems. The problem with PC MCIA is it is a generic technology, so it can be applied to anything. Um, and, a, and also, as a result of that, there have been some incompatibilities, some difficulties in implementing it. You know, this card's too big to fit into this slot, and which machine has which kind of slot, and it's very hard to figure this stuff out. And as a result of that, it hasn't been as popular as, as it was expected to be in terms of the sales of the cards. Coming up next, the latest in color printers from PC Expo. If you've just bought your first computer, you know it's like buying a house or a boat. The buying has just begun. Time now for add-ons and the decisions as to what else to buy. Well, we found some good ideas for you here at PC Expo from new color printers to miniature CD drives that read and write data. Sony showed off the portable MD data drive, a new storage technology based on Sony's Minidisc personal audio system. The drive is smaller than the average Walkman stereo, yet provides 140 megabytes of rewritable storage on a two and a half inch magneto optical disc. Access time is comparable to a single-speed CD-ROM drive at 300 milliseconds, and it will play your audio discs. If access time is important, you may want to look at Sony's 3.5-inch portable Magneto optical disc drive. This is faster than the mini-disc with 150 millisecond access time. This is a prototype unit, but Sony says internal and external models will be available later this fall for about $800. There were printers for every budget here at PC Expo. If you want fast printing, how about this Typhoon 60 from Data Products? This laser printer does 60 pages per minute, but it costs $95,000. Hewlett Packard demonstrated the new DeskJet 650C Color Inkjet Plotter for people who need fast, affordable, large format color output. This printout measures 3 feet by 4 feet, takes only about 10 minutes to complete, and has a resolution of 300 dpi. The price on the HP 650C color plotter is under $10,000. Epson demonstrated its new stylus color inkjet printer. The Epson stylus can print up to 720 dpi and sells for less than $600. This new printer from Epson is one of the first color printers that makes me think that color can go mainstream. At $550, you're getting an inkjet printer that gives you photorealistic images. Now, albeit it's got to be on a specially coated paper, but still, I can do spot color very easily and very quickly. And when you look at that, as well as things that are being done by Canon, by HP, by almost every printer manufacturer who is saying color is where it's at, 
They're now saying that, of course, inkjet is the fundamental architecture that they're going to support. So that makes me believe that with all of this activity, and especially with prices of $550 for this Epson product, that you are going to see color go mainstream by the end of this year. I saw some very interesting color printing. Epson's 720 dot per inch color printer it looks good. Uh, I saw in some of the private suites and in non-disclosures some even better printers that will be coming out uh, later in the year from some of the companies. Uh, color uh, with essentially no compromise uh, inkjet. You're going to have inkjet printers that are printing four, five, six, seven, maybe even eight pages per minute in black and white that can also print color that are going to sell for under $500. I wonder whether people are going to want to buy a laser printer. When they get color, when they get laser performance and laser quality, for a, a lot less money, Inkjet has a very big future. There were the usual interesting odds and ends at this PC Expo. QVoice introduced a voice-activated PC security system that uses the individual characteristics of your voice as a decryption key. Voice Lock stores your voice print and analyzes it, much like a fingerprint, to confirm your identity. And if you're tired of tangled cords or can't find a flat surface for your mouse, Arcana Technologies has a new mouse for you. The Imp is an infrared wireless mouse which can be operated like a TV remote control. Instead of a trackball, the Imp uses a pressure sensitive finger pad so you can sit back, put up your feet, and compute all night long. That's our report from PC Expo in New York. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Stuart Chaffe. In the random access file this week, Apple says it is ready to license several companies to manufacture Macintosh clones. Initial reports indicated the deal was with three foreign companies in Europe and Asia and that the companies would not be authorized to use the English language version of the Mac operating system, meaning initial sales of the Mac clones would be limited to foreign markets. However, other reports have indicated that Apple will license the Macintosh operating system to some American companies for sale in the United States. An Apple spokesman says some domestic PC companies may soon announce products that use the Macintosh operating system and Macintosh hardware components. Officially, Apple will only confirm that it has a new strategy of pursuing licensing deals with other hardware vendors. Apple is also trying to give the Macintosh operating system a new look. Both Microsoft and IBM have given cute names to Windows and OS2, so Apple is trying to do the same by coming up with a more exciting name than System 7.5. The next upgrade of the Macintosh operating system will be called Mac OS and will feature a new logo based on the Happy Mac icon. No word on when the new Mac OS will be released. Compaq has launched several new models in its effort to stay number one in the PC market. Four new Presario models were announced last week. Two of the models come with a built-in TV tuner so you can use your PC as a TV. Just plug in a TV cable line and you can watch television on your computer. And PC prices keep on tumbling. Now, Hewlett Packard says it will cut Vector prices by as much as 20% effective next month. The entry-level HP Vectra VL2 will now list for under $1,400, lower than the current price of the IBM value point. HP has introduced a new device called OmniShare, which is a kind of interactive fax machine. It lets two people look at and work on the same document simultaneously, with each able to electronically make comments, which both parties can see. The OmniShare lets you talk and move data at the same time on a standard phone line. The real-time document conferencing system does not require a PC, but you can hook it up to a computer to transfer files or images. It looks like more delays for IBM's power PC computer. The problem is apparently not with the hardware, but with delays in the new version of the OS2 operating system, which IBM hopes to bundle with the power PC. IBM's power PC computer had been expected in October, but it now looks like 1995 before power PC hits the market. IBM is moving ahead in other ways to boost acceptance of its OS2 operating system. Big Blue has announced an agreement with CompuAd to preload OS2 on PCs sold by CompuAd. However, the retail chain will continue to also load Microsoft Windows on its PCs. Details are in now on the new IBM Aptiva line of PCs. The Aptiva brand replaces the PS1 model. All new Aptivas come bundled with CD-ROM drive, soundboard, and answering machine capabilities. 
Some models are also available with speech recognition. Prices run from about $1,000 to $2,600 plus monitor. Hewlett Packard says it is lowering prices on its color printers. You can now buy a color DeskJet 540 for under $350. And HP is introducing a new color LaserJet printer early next year. It will sell for around $7,000. Most other color laser printers have been in the $10,000 range. Finally, Matsushita of Japan, the company which makes Panasonic appliances, says it has developed a new ultra-high density storage technology which is thousands of times more efficient than traditional optical storage. Matsushita says it can store a two-hour movie in two-tenths of a square centimeter of space. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee. We'll see you here next time.